Welcome back everyone to my Southern Arkansas garden. This is April of 2022. I have not made a video since October of last year, I believe. It's been a while. Um, I had kind of a rough winter um, and, and fall. I think I got burned out a little bit on the garden. Um, I was doing a lot of outside physical work in July and August of last year, which were the two you know, hottest months of the year for our region. I'm in uh, zone, I'm in U.S. hardiness zone 8A, where we typically have really hot, humid summers and mild winters. So, I did not plant or grow very much over the fall or the winter just due to burnout and needing to reset. I also had some new ideas come to mind of what I wanted to do this year and I will explore that more in the next video or the next couple of videos to come. But I wanted to show you what is growing in my garden so far. So I have about four or five different lettuces. that I have direct seeded into what I call my best garden bed. For whatever reason, things just grow wonderfully in that garden bed. I think it's because of the compost and the amendments that I put in it when we first made it. It was the very first bed that I ever had. So in my vegetable garden, I have six raised garden beds. The first one is four foot wide by 12 foot long and it's 18 inches tall. And I had that one, I had, that was the first one I had for my first gardening season of 2019. The next year, I wanted to expand, and so my husband built me five more four foot wide by 12 foot long garden beds, and they are only 12 inches high, which is fine. Uh, they're made out of cedar posts that are six by six, and we had those milled by a local miller, <laughs> by a local man who owns his own sawmill. We chose the cedar because it is more resistant to rot and bug damage and uh, we wanted them to be as long lasting as possible. Also, and I know there's some controversy about this, but uh, I did not want to have anything that was treated. I did not want to grow vegetables with anything that could leach into the soil or into the food itself. I am not 100% organic in our family or just my, me personally, but I do try. And I was talking to a friend not too long ago about this particular subject about organic and you know what we give our kids and things like that. And she said it just became totally overwhelming to me and so I decided that I really needed to do an 80-20 balance. And I said yes, I totally agree with that. I buy organic whatever I can, but I also love white powder donuts and so <laughs> I eat those every once in a while too so it's just it, it has to be a balance um, for some of us and some of us you don't need a balance and that's absolutely great and that's wonderful but um, anyway so we have about four different types of lettuces growing in my best bed I also have a lot of volunteers this is going to be the year of volunteer plants okay uh, and I'm really excited about that. I am absolutely thrilled. I have marigold volunteers everywhere, which is perfect. If I had to choose a favorite plant or a favorite flower, it would probably be the marigold. It is utilitarian. It's, you know, it's so useful. It's a companion plant. It grows so well and so easily in my climate. I don't have to worry about it. And it self seeds readily. And I may regret that one day, but <laughs> for right now, I'm loving it. Um, I also have a volunteer green bean plant. Um, it's, I believe it's Kentucky Homestead uh, pole bean. I grew those on that trellis last year. And so they had just come back. And I think I have some footage to show you. They're actually coming up in the ground underneath it where some of the beans have fallen. My kids and I pulled all the foliage down off of the trellis 
to clean it off, you know, this spring. And I thought the seeds were not viable anymore because they've been out in the cold, wet weather and all that. Uh, no. <laughs> so my daughter asked if she could plant some of the, some of the beans um, in this raised bed behind me. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, because I hadn't really planned out the garden or what was going to be here, but I didn't think they were viable. So I was like, yeah, you could plant them in there. And now we have like 30 green bean plants growing behind me. <laughs> which I think is hilarious. So, and I don't know what to do with them. You know, I have like, oh, I've never had so many volunteers and I know that plants need a certain amount of space for, you know, nutrients and disease, especially in our region with the high humidity. But um, I just don't have the heart to pull them out right now. <laughs> and in fact, my compost pile, which I don't think I showed you, um, it has a green bean plant growing in it as well. And it, that's the best looking one over there. And that's kind of how it goes some years. But um, also on this trellis, I planted a hyacinth bean pod. Plant or bean, seed. And I really, really, really hope that it survives because it, it's this dark green foliage, leaves with a dark purple vine and then it produces, I think it produces either white or purple flowers and those turn into like a really dark purple seed pod and I just, oh, I think it's so beautiful the pictures I've seen and I really want something beautiful to grow on this trellis on both sides to just provide that visual aesthetic that I'm really, really, really looking for um, not only this year but just in years to come. So for that reason I have planted a lot of daffodils along the fence row in front of my garden because I know, or jonquils, narcissists is what people call them, um, because they will reproduce and divide. They will reproduce, but I will have to dig them up to, to divide them eventually. Um, but it, just, it was just like a 50, it was a bag at Walmart of 50 daffodil bulbs. And in my region, you really wanna plant them in like November, December, but because I was really having a really hard time mentally, I didn't get out here and plant them until probably late January and maybe February. I don't remember. But I also planted tulip bulbs at that point too. I had ordered about 200 different um, bulbs of different specialty varieties to grow in my raised bed this year. And I had those in the refrigerator because in my region we don't get cold enough and I did not buy these pre-chilled. Tulip bulbs need to be have a cold period of several weeks to grow to the best of their ability. Anyway, um, I just bought these daffodil bulbs and planted them right here really late with my daughter. And all of the other daffodils that we have in the ground, or the, just the natural ones here, they came up in March like they normally would. But these actually came up in April and I was really excited to see them. I was, I mean, it was just like, it's the, the marker of spring to me and that no matter, you know, even though it was late, in the season, I planted them, I did it, I did the work, I put them in the ground, which is literally all I did. I did not put fertilizer or anything down. I put them in the ground, covered them up, and they came up. And that was just like such, oh, like a victory for me. You know, it's like, no matter how hard life gets, no matter, you know, how many breaks you have to take, you can still keep going. And there's always gonna be a season of beauty that comes after just a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, sewing. So, um, anyway, I've got the green beans, volunteers, and the hyacinth bean on that side. In this bed right here, I still have some leftover tulips that are, they're not producing tulips anymore. Um, it's just the bulbs that are in the ground and I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna leave them in the ground or in the raised bed to come up next year um, and then just all the green bean seeds right here I don't have a plan for this bed right here the one behind me has a little bit of uh, volunteer peppermint uh, broccoli and kale that I sowed sugar snap peas that I sowed that we have one pea on right now and I'm so excited
Um, and also uh, an old daffodil. So when we were planting these daffodils on the fence line, my daughter had taken several of them and planted them in different places in the garden, which I love. I just love that. Okay, and then in the garden bed behind it, I thought it was carrots, but it might be love in a mist. It's a flower. I have sowed those there before. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm leaving them there. I have sage that has overwintered from last year. And a lot of weeds and a big huge ant bed. I have ant beds in a lot of my raised beds right now. I have poured diatomaceous earth on them, which is an organic kind of natural way to get rid of them. For some people, for me, I, I just I have to try to live with them. Um, and I have an in-ground bed behind my raised beds. And in one part of it, I have a black tip wheatgrass growing, and that is for ornamental cutting. Um, and then we have a little bed of onions, which are like a green onion type. So last year with, you know, my mental state or whatever, I did not start any onion seeds to plant in the fall, which is really kind of what I need to do in my region. Um, but I didn't start any, and so I didn't have any to plant. But our neighbor, who we barter with quite often, was gifted some little onion bulbs, onion sets, um, from one of our community members and they said that these onions have grown in our community since 1971 and I was like wow that's really cool you know <laughs> so I planted them out here I just no fertilizer or anything just planted them in there and they come up and now they're flowering that's what the little white ball on the top is is they're flowering and they can seed which I really should pull them up but I don't know I have a thing about like the beauty in the garden and not wanting to touch it anyway and the so that's in the in-ground bed. Above that, in the raised bed, we have our snapdragons that have overwintered. So I started those snapdragons last spring from seed. They're called apple blossom snapdragons from Baker, Baker Creek. And I'm telling you, I did not do anything. Everything in the garden just died and I left it for the birds. And then this spring I came in and pulled out what I could have cut out, you know, for those snapdragons, they had like long brown dry canes or stalks on them. I just cut all those back because I could see some new green growth at the bottom and I just cut them all back and now they're flushing up and I'm just so so happy about it like it's the year of the volunteer <laughs> and um, anyway so I think we have some volunteer marigolds and I'll have tomato plants and pepper plants planted and those I did start from seed in my little grow room in uh, this spring I did start those from seed and so this year we have uh, Cherokee purple tomato we have triple L crop we have Roma and San Marzano and then the peppers is just like a, a green bell pepper because that's really all we eat we don't eat uh, a lot of jalapenos or I, don't know, I probably could grow something like a shishito or something but 
I, don't, I haven't bought the seeds for it. I'm kind of trying to rein myself in on, on seed buying. Um, anyway, and so the bed in the middle right here has a ton of volunteer zinnia plants. Which we had a few zinnias there last year. And of course they died and now the seeds have gone everywhere and they're just like everywhere. So I want them to come up, but then again I know that it can create a lot of congestion and like the humidity can create powdery mildew and all of these things. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I have some tomato plants planted in that one as well. Oh, there is my daughter's uh, coneflower from last year is coming back. And she bought a new plant this year called an armeria or sea thrift. I never heard of it before, but it smells like cupcakes. So if you if you are looking for that, it's it's delicious. Um, and then we have some cilantro planted in that bed, and one of the cilantros has grown and bolted, and that's what that big flower is. And then I have some more little cilantros uh, planted next to it, just kind of as a succession planting. But I think that's all for my vegetable garden right now. Um, I'm really excited about this season for two reasons. Uh, the vegetables and then one other thing that's kind of in the back, back there in the field. And I'll show you that next time. And um, so anyway, thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching this video. And I hope that it gave you a little bit of energy and a little bit of inspiration because I watch a lot of gardening videos just for inspiration. I'm like, oh yeah, I can get out there and do it. You know, I want to grow that or I want to walk out there and see that. And, and not only that, but I want my children to enjoy that as well. And so it's really important to me to just keep going and don't, you know, not to get knocked down or anything.